I've been building this uh, bench that goes uh, next to that uh, wood that I just scribed by the window. This is a bench that goes underneath the window. So anyway, I built it and uh, originally I had this area on this side and I was going to have to make an access point uh, for that uh, diesel heater in here and cut it into the other unit also. And uh, my brother come home and of course, you know, you get into something, you're doing it and uh, you realize, or he said to me, uh, you know, it would have been maybe better on the other side. So anyway, I started looking at it and as it turned out, I'd made it three quarters of an inch too deep, the whole unit. So uh, I had to take it apart anyway. So I thought, oh, and I didn't like the way it was working that uh, this area, which uh, is gonna have a flip up lid. This is just for um, uh, charging. This is a battery uh, component uh, in here. And then the balance of it will be a uh, pull-out drawer. On this side, it's just going to be one big drawer. And so anyway, it, it ended here. And I didn't like the way it was... Um, I, I just didn't like it. It didn't look like it was uh, made properly. And, and there was, a, there was going to be a joint in here. How am I going to make the joint? How am I going to extend it or whatever? Because I was only thinking of this area. So when I took it apart, I've got quarter-inch uh, angle iron here. One and a half. And you can see the profile. So what I did was I cut each one so that now it's all tied together like that. And now it, it's, it's all flush. So when I put the three quarter on here, it's all the same level. And on this side, uh, there'll be a different treatment on the top. I'll show that later. But uh, anyway, much happier with uh, the way it's going. And uh, let's see, I started at uh, eight o'clock this morning. It's now seven o'clock and kokanee time, baby. Day is done. So anyway, this is what I ended up with. And uh, now I can uh, just attach that drill and uh, uh, anchor it uh, into that edge and uh, should have no problems with it uh, deflecting and uh, such so it's just a matter of putting the drawers in and cutting that access hole and uh, it's done So it creates its own lip for the uh, for the funder. Be careful, son. Yeah, full for punishment. My work must really stink, it's attracting flies. Of course, uh, a good way to use this tool, it's, it's crazy, man, trying to uh, use your hands on this. So what I do is I use a wrench. As you can see, when you take this and you put it in the jig and line it all up and tighten it, it is tightening from this point, which is beyond the wood right here. So you, you have to be very careful that when you're doing it, that it stays um, level, uh, perpendicular, because if, if it if it opens up a little, and it will do that, and it doesn't take a lot to get a little, like obviously not that, that cockeyed, but you have to make sure that it's perfectly 
uh, up against this uh, composite material to uh, uh, create a right angled hole. So anyway, uh, I, I see they're selling these on uh, uh, the internet there. They're, they're dirt cheap now because there's obviously uh, more uh, convenient tools been developed and uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, just be careful if you're using it because uh, it can uh, create more problems than it's worth uh, because it doesn't take long to uh, ruin a piece of wood. <laughs> Here's the part that I think I like the least about these, uh, these jigs that use the wooden pegs. But the wooden pegs, uh, anyway, we'll do this in real time. I've got a uh, twist tie or a nylon strap here because uh, that's what I used to uh, get the glue into the holes. So anyway, uh, right. So I got glue on a piece of wood. I'm all set to go. It's like a race. It's a for me anyway. I don't know. I, maybe I. Uh, I'm overdoing it, but I always feel like there's a time constraint here. So anyway, nope, won't, yeah, nope, won't go. Okay, so anyway, um, for half of them, what you can do is uh, uh, put the pegs in one, and so what you do is you, uh, you, you, you take the peg, roll it in the glue, stick it in, self-explanatory. Set, set the peg with a mallet, but now on the other ones, uh, you want to have glue in the holes. So anyway, I'll put a drop of glue in each one. Then I'll take the uh, nylon strap and just kind of uh, work it in there just so that I know that it's somewhat uh, near the bottom. Same on the other end. Yeah, once those, uh, those uh, pegs, because they're compressed, those little dowels, uh, they are compressed and so uh, the, the idea with them and, and the biscuits is that they, uh, they swell and uh, fill the gap. And uh, so the, the addition of the moisture, which is uh, in the glue does that and of course the glue it does its own thing so uh, uh, you, you have two components working uh, you know to uh, create a, a good uh, adhesion for the uh, joint so anyway here we go like I say just move it around and what I'll do on these ones is right at the end, as I put them on, I'll make sure that there's glue on that surface, not just the pegs. Okay, so I got them all done here. Yeah, and I guess there's a, like, a, I think I got one and a half inch. Yeah, I got one and a half inch, and I, I think my holes are just a little bit deeper than that, so that any excess glue will go down to the bottom, because you will get a hydraulic lock in these things, where the darn peg won't go in. So uh, you have to kind of... Uh, do it so that uh, it'll uh, have room to uh, set the peg. Okay. So. Okay, here we go. Lock is running. One end. And I've got these all marked. Uh, these uh, ends, uh, when you drill them, you mark them, I letter them, letters, numbers, whatever it takes, just so that you know that where you're going is uh, where you've drilled and uh, you've got to line it up. Okay, so that's uh, that one done. see these they're, they're all splined get right into this here oh where are we here yeah they're, they're splined there you can see the the ridges in them it holds the glue and lets it go by and that's the uh, the swell factor
Okay, two more, two more. Very strong, very strong joints. These are, uh, I, I believe they're either birch or maple, these uh, little splines. So, hey, it's just not glue. You know what? I'm gonna put a little more in that one. Yeah, and as you can, I'll show you here, as you can see, there, there is a squeeze out eh, on the joint. You can see the glue is, is actually coming out, so uh, you can, uh, you know, usually just put another dab in that, that in between them, and uh, then you know that that other surface, when it uh, makes contact, will push that out again. And hopefully that will, it, it not only uh, creates adhesion, but it, uh, it, it has a gap filling process too, where these will, uh, uh, you know, if the joint isn't perfect or whatever, it will, okay, now I'm looking for numbers here, A, B, C, okay, this is B, okay, B, and this end is, oh, I didn't mark that end, that must be D, D right here. And now, I'll just put a little bit of glue here, and a little bit here. Now this can be the, uh, the problem part, if you're not, uh, if you haven't done this before, you can't knock it all the way down, because what it'll do is it'll throw the other end out of alignment. So typically you just kind of uh, finesse it. Um, okay, sir, it's, it's going in. Now look at it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how it lined up. So you have to be conscious of that. Try to get it as tight as possible and see what your alignment is. And, and you don't have many variables here, like, uh, you know, uh, you're kind of committed once you do this and just hope for the best. As you can see, you're getting all kinds of glue squeeze out, which is good. At least you know it's a, it's a wet joint. Like I said, they're kind of a pain these uh, things. So I had it, I had that jig, but uh, in a perfect world, I would have used maybe uh, a uh, mortise and tendon or uh, something else. But uh, obviously, I don't have my uh, woodworking shop anymore, so. Uh, you have to make do with what you got. So it's all about knowing how to use your tools and uh, doing the best. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, and yeah, they, they, they never line up flush, uh, these things. I find anyway, even though this is, it, it, it's a, what's called a self-centering jig. Uh, even though it self-centers, uh, the, the nominal size of these materials vary, moisture, whatever. So, uh, you know, you have to kind of work with what you got, and uh, there will be a sand off later. Um, yeah, now the other thing is this glue squeeze out. There's a couple different uh, approaches to that. Some people will let it just set up and uh, take it off as a chunk, or you can wipe it off and uh, uh, use a wet rag, which 
If it's too wet, it could potentially weaken the joint because it's diluting the uh, glue. But uh, yeah, and in doing that, it, it puts the glue into the wood fiber. So uh, this I'm going to be staining. So uh, I really don't know. I'm going to think about it. how I, uh, there, there is a lot of glue here, so I, I might want to wipe it off and just uh, go with that because these pins are very strong. So anyway, that's these jigs. Love them or hate them.